Windy Miller runs the Wave Surf School in Cornwall. He's also a geographer, and that helps him work out where he needs to be to catch the best waves. Windy might not be his real name, but it'd be hard to find a more suitable one. Because like all geographers, Windy knows that wind is what causes waves. Waves are almost kind of generated by the friction of the wind moving across the ocean surface. And so initially what happens, um, the wind picks up and it makes the surface of the water all choppy. And then slowly one bit of chop gets pushed into another bit of chop. And then that, the wind starts pushing it on its, on its journey across the ocean. And not, but obviously you need that to kind of happen over thousands of miles. So initially all the waves will be going lots of different ways and then slowly the waves will join together and then the wind can get behind them and then slowly they can set off their journey towards the coast. As wind blows across the surface of the oceans, some of its energy gets transferred to the water by friction, creating waves, or what surfers call swell. Three key factors affect how much energy the swell accumulates. The strength of the wind, the length of time it blows, and the distance over which it's been blowing, otherwise known as the fetch. For an experienced surfer like Windy, the bigger the swell, the better. The Jurassic Coast extends 150 kilometres from East Devon to Dorset. It's the UK's first natural world heritage site and contains some spectacular landforms, each the result of a unique combination of energy from waves and tides and a very particular local geology. The eastern end of the site is called the Purbeck Coast. It's made up of four bands of rock. To the north are the sands and gravels. Then comes a band of chalk, followed by soft clay, and finally, limestone. Different rocks get eroded at different rates. The result is what's called differential erosion, and that leads to the formation of headlands and bays. Welcome to Sandbanks near Poole. It might be hard to believe on a rainy day in June, but with the fourth highest property prices in the world, this stretch of coast has been nicknamed Britain's Palm Beach. Come the summer, it'll also be packed with tourists. There are two reasons the local authority spends millions of pounds maintaining the beach. It's also why, despite the weather, coastal surveyors Dave and Gareth are collecting information about the way it's changing shape. 